Okay. For everyone to, to who has entered the room, we're about to begin. So please have a share and make yourself, make yourself comfortable. This session will be live in the Zoom and live streamed on YouTube channel by Universitas Tecom. Live streaming. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, to the Honorable Mohamad Rosli Abdul Ghani. As a senior lecturer and research fellow of Center of Excellence for Social Innovation and Sustainability from University Malaysia Perlis in Malaysia. And a very warm welcome to the participants and students from Stecom University. It's indeed a pleasure to have all of you in this memorable occasion. And I would like to thank God for gathering us here in a visiting lecture program regarding marketing the intangible products. Before we begin, please allow me to read our agenda this afternoon. First session class will be delivered by our guest lecturer, Mohamad Rosli Abdul Ghani. And after... This session uh, will be a question and answer session and after the presentation and continue with a break for a photo session at the end. And we will start for this class today. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to remind all of the participants to turn off the microphone during the session. Yeah, for Muhammad Rolsley, the time is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Novita, as a chairperson for uh, this afternoon uh, knowledge uh, sharing uh, session. Okay, dear professors, uh, associate professors, doctors, uh, lecturers, and all the attendees uh, for this uh, afternoon session, Assalamualaikum and uh, very good afternoon. Okay, uh, this afternoon is my turn to, to, to share the, uh, the, the uh, to, to have a, a knowledge uh, sharing session, uh, which my topic, I'll, I'll be covering on the marketing, the intangible products. Okay, uh, before we start, let me share the slide for my sharing session today. Okay, can you see the slides uh, on the screen? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, my name uh, is uh, introduced by Ms. Novita just now, Mama Rosli Ben Abdugani. I'm uh, one of the teaching staff at the Faculty of Business and Communication in UNIMAP. And uh, I'm, all, I'm also a research fellow of Center for Social Innovation and Sustainability. Okay, um, basically looking at the topic, the, yeah, we will be talking about the market offerings and basically the market offerings to the customers consists of two types of uh, products. One is uh, tangible products and the other one is intangible products. The tangible products, it is something that uh, that is, physically exist, whereby the customer can uh, touch, the customer can see the product, the customer can hold the products. And the other one is the intangible products, which is something that is uh, exists, but not in physical form. So it is not, an, uh, it is not a phys physical object that the customer can touch or hold to it, okay? So, in other words, uh, the intangible product that I'm referring to for uh, the knowledge uh, sharing session the afternoon, this afternoon is a service. So the intangible product that I'm referring to is a service. Okay, let's look at the uh, definition of a service, okay? Um, the Cambridge uh, Dictionary define the service as the, the, act, the act of dealing with customers in a shop, restaurant, hotel by taking their orders, showing or 
selling then goods and etc that's the definition given by the uh, cambridge and another definition now from the oxford dictionary they define services as the action of helping or doing work for someone and the last definition is uh, from the uh, marketing scholar which uh, they define the services as the economic activities performed by one party to the another and it is a uh, normally time based and these performances bring about desired result to recipient objects and the other assets so in exchange for money time and effort service customers expect value from access to labor skills expertise goods facilities networks and system from the service provider and bear in mind that when we purchase a certain services there is no transfer of ownership unlike we buy things we buy physical product once we pay the money the items is belong to us so in case of services there is no transfer of anything because it is a it is an action it is a performance so basically looking at these three definition the services is something that is it is not visible it is uh, intangible it is something that uh, uh, you 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 can uh, you you cannot touch you cannot hold to it yeah? that's why those three definition they are referring to as an action or performance okay um i guess uh this topic is uh, very relevant to both of us uh, either from unimed or stecom university because both of us are in the service industry we are service provider okay we are providing education to the students okay uh why do we need to know uh, about the service why it is important that we know about the service okay whether we realize or not uh, services sector is um, dominating uh, the economies in most of the countries globally and it is uh, growing every every year this sector is growing every year globally the gdp for services sector they contribute about 65.7% compared to the other two main sectors which is uh, manufacturing is about 28.3 and agriculture is about 4.3% uh, okay so if the uh, global contribution of the uh, services sector exceed more than half which is 65.7% meaning to say most of the countries globally their services sector uh, contribute to more than 50%. Okay? When that sector is growing and the percentage is considered as a uh, two third of the uh, other sectors of economy um most of new employment are created from these sectors. Okay? A lot of uh, job opportunities provided from these sectors. Okay, when when there is a lot of uh, activities happening at these sectors, meaning to say, there are a lot of so of marketing activities happen at in this area. Okay, if we look at the uh, services industry contribution to GDP to our country, to Malaysia, uh, it contribute about fifty one point five percent, whereas for the Indonesia. It contribute about forty two point eight percent. This data I'm uh, I get it from a uh, uh, World Bank uh, data dot World Bank dot org from uh, in twenty twenty one. 
Although our figures is uh, still uh, not reach uh, 60%, but then the percentage is increasing compared to the previous years. Okay. In 2015, the GDP contribution for services sector for Malaysia is about uh, 48 or 49%. Okay, uh, in Indonesia, it's, it, it is less than 42.8%, but the number is increasing. So that means uh, this sector contribute a lot to our economy. Yeah. So having understood uh, these uh, sectors, these services sectors, it would give an advantage to us. Okay, it would give an advantage in terms of that we manage uh, to do something that we can be better off than the competitors in the uh, education service providers. Okay, this is the diagram that I mentioned just now in terms of the contribution of services uh, industries to GDP globally. Okay, services 65.7%, manufacturing 28.3%, and agriculture is about 4.3%. So the other percentage uh, is from the other sectors. Okay, uh, let's look at uh, in detail what is the uh, services. But then roughly what we have in mind, service is something that we cannot see. Unlike the uh, tangible product, something that physical, physically exists that we can hold, we can touch it. Okay. Uh, from the process uh, perspective, uh, there, is, there are differences in terms of services offered to the customers depending on the what is being processed okay so roughly in terms of uh, classification there are three broad categories of services if we are looking from the process approach okay number one is a uh, people processing okay this type of uh, processing uh, basically uh, the action or the performance is directed to the physical body of the customers such as hairstylists or uh, medical services whereby the customer has to present themselves has, has to uh, have to uh, be at the service provider's place in order to get that service so meaning to say, if you are not feeling very well, you want to see a doctor, we have to go to the clinic, we have to go to the hospital in order to get that service. That's what it means by people processing, which directed to the physical body of the customers. Okay. The other type of uh, processing, it, it is a possession processing. Okay. This kind of uh, services, this action or this performance is directed to the customer's belonging, the customer's item. Example, courier service or laundry services. Okay, for courier services, we are going to, uh, we, want to we want the courier service company to deliver certain item or parcel to somewhere. So basically, the services is focused on our items, our parcel, our things that you want to deliver to somewhere. For the case of laundry services, the services is directed to, to our clothes. We want to get our clothes uh, washed and dry at the uh, laundry shop. That is the second type of possession processing. And the uh, last one is the information-based processing. Basically, this type of services is directed to the people's mind. Okay, the best example is, is our sharing session today. Okay, 
the participant, the attendees need to sacrifice their time and their mind in order to get this type of particular service. Okay, other than education, uh, the example could be a training, uh, consultancy services also fall under this type of processing. Of course, because of the, uh, the, the intangibility nature of uh, services, it does pose uh, challenges to the uh, marketing people. It is uh, difficult to uh, visualize, it is uh, difficult to explain to the customers pertaining to the services. Compared to the intangible product, it is much more easier for the uh, uh, marketing people to explain to the customers. We can describe in terms of shape. We can describe, I mean, let's, let's take the example of a handphone. We can describe the customers in, in terms of the a bigger screen, a sleek design, a, a larger memories. A lot of things that we can describe if the item exists in physical form. But then for the uh, services, it is an action, it is a performance which make it difficult for the marketing people to explain to the customers. Okay, let's say uh, we want to explain about a uh, certain uh, medical service uh, given by that particular doctor. How good their service is how bad their service is. It, it is hard to explain. You need a uh, you need to explain a lot compared to when you are explaining about the tangible products. Okay, and then for services, it does involve people. Okay, which means that in providing the service, the service provider and the service uh, delivered. You can you can separate that. It is inseparable. Okay, like what I am doing today, we have a sharing session. So I am considered as a the service provider. I must present during this uh, session to 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 deliver. I mean to share the the, the knowledge that I have for this afternoon. And then uh, in terms of output for the services because of uh, people involvement, the quality might vary. The quality might be different. Okay, let's take the example of the uh, lecturers. Although we are teaching the same uh, subject, we are teaching the same syllabus, but the way we uh, conduct the session in teaching and learning might be different. Okay, some might prefer lectures, whereas some might prefer a lot of activities or discussion. So the quality of the output, the quality of uh, teaching and, uh, and learning might be different. Uh, and other challenges in terms of uh, distribution because of the intangibility nature of the services, there is a uh, uh, in terms of channel of distribution, there is a, it is non-physical also. Okay, um, it differs from uh, uh, distributing from a uh, tangible product, whereby there is a flow of uh, physical product from the producer to the customers. That physical product might go through the wholesalers and then retailers before it reach the customers, either end user or business customers. Whereas in distributing the uh, services, which is, which is intangible, the channel is non-physical, okay? Okay, let's move on to the... Uh, about developing uh, service uh, products, okay? Um, okay, basically the, the service products, uh, it consists of uh, three elements, okay? 
One is core element, second is the supplementary elements, and the third one is a delivery process. So what does it mean by the core element? It is a, a main component or central component or the uh, problem solving benefit that the customers are looking for in services. It is a solution to the problem that the customers are facing. For example, hotel. The main thing that the customers are looking for hotel is and accommodation and security. Shelter, accommodation and security. What are the customers looking for when they are uh, using a courier service? Okay, they are looking for um, uh, timely delivery of item in perfect condition at the uh, correct address. That is the core element for the particular service, the main thing, okay? Whereas for the uh, supplementary element, these are the additional things which make the, which can enhance the services offered to the, to the customers. Okay. Basically, there are two types of uh, supplementary elements. One is uh, facilitating and the other one is enhancing. Facilitating basically it would uh, it would assist it would facilitate the customer to use the service. Whereas enhancing by the word enhancing it would add value and appeal of the services to the customers. Okay, let me give uh, let me give the example in terms of uh, facilitating. Information is a must. Meaning to say, if you want to use certain services, you must have the information about that service provider in terms of location, in terms of uh, a pricing, okay? in terms of their operating hours. You must have that information in order for you, for you to use the, the service. Enhancing, it can be hospitality warm welcome by the uh, staff you are providing um, um, you are providing uh, seats for the customers uh, while waiting for uh, while waiting to get a service you are offering uh, 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 washrooms you are offering uh, magazines for the customers to read those come under the Hospitality under enhancing. It, it, is, it would add value to the service provided. It just, um, the core, the main one is uh, to get the uh, medical treatment. But then while waiting, at the waiting area, the uh, cleaning or hospital does provide TV, does provide the magazine that comes under enhancing element. Okay. It just would add value and appeal uh, for the customers while waiting for the turn to get the uh, treatment from the doctors. The last element is a delivery process. Basically, those are the activities uh, process in delivering core and supplementary. What the customer need to do in order for them to get that service. For example, if the customer went to see a doctor, they want to get medical treatment, what they need to do, they must park their car, they must go to registration counter, register at the, uh, at the counters, and then they have to wait before they can, uh, uh, before they can uh, 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 being called up uh, for the turn to see a doctor. What are the activities, what are the processes involved for the customers in order to get that service? Those are under the delivery process.
Okay, this other one that I mentioned just now about the supplementary element, facilitating and enhancing. Uh, it, it is depicted in a diagram as a flower of services. The core element, the problem solving benefit, the uh, solution to the problem is at the center and it is accompanied by all these uh, supplementary elements. And the delivery process, how to deliver all those things to the customers. What are the activities, what are the processes involved for the customers in order to get that particular service? Okay, uh, in terms of the implication after knowing that the services consist of three main components, namely uh, core products, supplementary elements, and uh, delivery process, bear in mind that uh, it is not all uh, core product must have all these uh, supplementaries just now. It very much depends on the type of service. It, it also depends on the uh, level of competition with the competitors. It also depends on the responses from the customer needs. Okay, for the case of uh, people processing and high contact services, you might need to have more supplementary services in order to 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 uh, more satisfy the customers. Okay, again, the example. Let's say the customers are. Uh, uh, when to see a doctor. That one we consider as a people processing. Okay. So while uh, what the customer need to do for, for, for he or she to register, does it take a longer process to register? And then after registration, um, what need to be, uh, is there any proper place for the customers to be? What are the things that we can uh, add some more just to make the customers uh, do not feel boring while waiting? Okay. To add or not to add any supplementaries, it depends on, again, it depends on of the competitors. If the other clinics are offering a lot of things, we, we might be following the same thing. Or the customer are requesting. Okay, if they feel bored while waiting for their turn, maybe they can ask, is there anything that, is there any newspapers or is there any magazine that you can read while waiting? Why don't you put a TV for the patients to watch the TV while waiting? Okay, those are the extra things that you may add based on the customer request. It can add value uh, uh, for the customers while waiting for their turn to go and see the doctors. And again, it depends on the type of services uh, that you are offered. If your services considered as a budget uh, services, then there's no need for you to offer so much supplementary services. For example, you are operating a budget hotel. It is, it is not compulsory for you to offer so many things because yours is a under budget category of accommodation. So you stick to it, then you don't have to. Uh, it, customer when I said, customer won't, won't be very fussy, fussy because of yours is a budget of there. They won't demand so much because the amount that you pay for uh, for the accommodation is not that much. Okay. Okay, in terms of uh, pricing, uh, basically, this is the only uh, component which can uh, bring money to the companies. Okay. When our objective is uh, covering costs and uh, making profit or maximizing, maximizing uh, revenue and profit, that one you consider as a financial motive. Okay. There are times you are using a pricing strategy not because of the monetary uh, motive. Okay, those fall under the non-financial objective. Okay, you are using pricing to improve your market share. You are using a pricing strategy to create demand for the new services that you are offering. You want to build a customer base. So you are using also the 
pricing uh, strategy. Okay. So basically, in terms of uh, strategy for the pricing, but this one is a more on price a setting strategy. Okay. So to set the price, basically there are excuse me, there are three major uh, strategies. One is cost base. The other one is uh, competition base, and the last one is a uh, value base. Um, for the cost base is uh, quite straightforward, whereby you uh, you are calculating uh, what are the costs incurred in providing the service, taking into consideration your fixed cost and your indirect cost. Then you add a certain uh, margin for your profit, and that will be your price of the uh, services offered to the customers. Whereas for the uh, competition-based pricing, you are still you also you are still calculating your uh, cost of uh, producing that service. But then the ultimate decision would be depend on the how much the competitor are charging for that kind of services to the customers, and that would be your final decision in setting your price. Okay. If we just simply based on the uh, if we just based on the cost uh, cost uh, costing, we might add certain percentage ten or twenty percent, which is our profit margin, and that will be the price. But then for the competition base, we do not uh, look at the um, margin so much. We very much depend on what are the competitors are charging for similar kind of uh, service to the customers but then it also depends whether we can we can follow or not that competitor's pricing if uh, it would uh, it would hurt the company's financial we we might stick to our decision okay and the last one is a value based pricing basically okay again the costing part we still have to calculate uh, what would be the cost uh, incurred to come out with that service. But then in terms of the final decision on, uh, uh, on the price, we look at the perceived value of that services offered. Meaning to say we are weighing between uh, perceived benefit and perceived cost. Okay, we are looking at the uh, benefit from getting that service in and then we are comparing in terms of cost, in terms of time, in terms of hardship, in terms of um, uh, whatever cost that may incur in getting that service. If that benefit way more than the cost incurred, you may charge higher price for the services offered. Or you are the only service provider for that particular service. You are the only uh, solution for the problem that the customers are facing right now. So in that situation also, you may charge, you may enjoy higher price while uh, the competitors are coming in. Because your service might be highly valued by the customers because you are the only service provider for that particular service and the customers are looking for it. Okay. Uh, apart from uh, price setting strategy, strategy there are, uh, there are uh, other things as well that you might need to consider in terms of pricing. How much to charge? Basically, what we are, uh, what I'm explaining just now in terms of pricing strategy, which is uh, either cost based, uh, competition based, or value based. Other than that, uh, we must also decide in terms of the, our basis for pricing, uh, uh, namely, uh, how you are going to charge your customers. Is it per treatment, per hour, per job? Okay, you must specify that. Okay. And who should collect the payment? Okay. 
where should the payment be made? Cash? Um, card? You must also decide on where the payment should be made and when. Is it you must pay uh, in advance or cash on delivery or you can pay uh, within a certain uh, time period? Okay, and then uh, how should the payment be made? Uh, okay, like the one that I mentioned just now, either cash, or the, this one is, uh, uh, we are talking about the mode of payment, either in cash or card or transfer or any other means. But then it must be convenient to the customers. Okay, and the last one, how you are going to uh, communicate about the uh, this issues on pricing to the customers in terms of how much, uh, when, how you should pay, how you're going to tell the customers all this information. Okay. Next, we move on the, uh, about distribution or distributing services. In terms of distribution, In terms of distribution, basically, we are concerned about the availability of our services, where the customer can get that service. Okay. Um, again, uh, it again depends on the uh, types of uh, services. Okay. But then uh, most uh, core services, core element of the services, it requires a physical location. Okay. For example, if we are a service education service provider like Unimed and Stacom University, if our mode uh, of teaching and learning mainly face-to-face, uh, -face, then you need to have a physical location whereby the student the student can come to the class to attend the lectures okay but then if the uh, services offered more on the information base like uh, you are conducting training or you are conducting short courses online that one can be conducted online there is no need for physical location to deliver that service. Okay, in terms of uh, distribution option, basically there are three options. In terms of the uh, where the customer can get that service. One, customer must visit the uh, service provider's place in order to get that service. Again, example, if you want to get medical treatment, you can't get that treatment via online. You must go to the clinic. You must go to, to the doctor's premises in order to get that treatment from the doctor. If you want to get, to get your hair cut, you must go to the, uh, to the barber's uh, premise. Okay? Even uh, we as a, the education provider, if the teaching and learning is only conducted face-to-face, -face, then the students has to have to come to the class to attend the lectures. Okay? So when, when the customers need to be at the service provider's place, the, the location and the convenience of the site must be, uh, uh, is very important. It must be uh, convenient and it must be accessible for the customers. Second option, the service providers go to the customers. When? When the object of service is immovable. For example, you want to renovate your house. You can't bring your house to the contractor but then the, cont the contractor must come to your house and to do the uh, renovation. Same thing happened when you want, uh, you want to do some uh, electrical work. 
electrical works in your house, you want, uh, uh, there's a plumbing problem in your house, the, the plumber or the electrician must come to your house in order to deliver the service. Okay, uh, service provider also must go to the customers normally when, when it involves a B2B transaction. In a B2B transaction, normally the, 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 the amount of the transaction is big and the service provider would, uh, would, would uh, meet personally with the customers because of the volume, because, because of the amount of the uh, business that they, are, they have between the two. Um, service provider can also go to the customers when the customers are at the remote areas. For example, medical medical uh, service. If the customers are at the rural areas, the doctors must go to the uh, customers area. Or veterina. If let's say the uh, cattle farm or fish farm located in a rural area, the veterina, veterina also must go to the, the customers uh, place to deliver the service. Okay, um, is it possible? Uh, in the case of uh, education uh, like us, if in, in the education and service industry, either Unimap or uh, Stackholm, is it possible that we go to the customer's place? Is it still possible? If let's say uh, certain companies, uh, we, are, we are conducting training or we are uh, uh, providing short courses for that particular company and the participant, uh, there are quite a number of participants from that particular company joining the program. So we can go to that uh, company's uh, place to deliver the service instead of their employees come to our place to get to attend the training or short courses. And the last uh, option for distribution of services, uh, you can contact rem remotely, okay? There is no need for the service provider to go to the customer's place or there is no need for the customers come, to come to the provider's place. We can just uh, have a transaction at everybody's place. Example, like we are, what we are doing now. We can have a sharing session even though we are stay apart. I'm still in Malaysia and you guys in Indonesia, but then we can still uh, have a sharing session, although we are, although we don't have to go to each other's place. Okay, basically, this one uh, applies for uh, information based processing, which we can conduct uh, online. Okay, in terms of the uh, communicating the services. The first thing that we must identify is who is our target audience. Okay, whether it is a prospect customers or uh, existing customers, and employees also is our target audience. Okay, once we have identified who is our target audience, then we can decide what is the best best mode of communication to deliver the message to this group. Okay, we can afford to use um, various type uh, of uh, communication tool without knowing who is our target audience. If let's say we are targeting to the youngsters, we must know what are the uh, the best way to communicate with them. Is it in uh, Facebook? Instagram or Twitter. If we just use a normal advertising whereby this group do not watch the advertisement, then we are wasting our money. That's why we need to identify who is our target audience so that we can communicate our services. Because we are uh, providing these services specifically to solve the customer problem, to, to satisfy their needs. So we must communicate with the, through the right channel to, to reach them. 
then only uh, the communication will be effective. Once we know what is the uh, what are the target audience of uh, that we want to communicate about services, then we must decide in terms of the objective. What is our main objective? What do what are the things that we want to inform the customers? What are the things that we want to communicate the customers? We want to create awareness. We want we want to uh, we want to be uh, the preferred service provider among the customers. We want to highlight the quality of our services to the customers. We want to educate the customers on how to go about using our services. They can be a lot of objective and which is best marketing tool to inform those the target audience. These are the uh, marketing communication mix. There's a lot. It can be personal communication, it can be advertising. Under advertising also, there are a lot of uh, marketing uh, advertising tools. It can be broadcast, print, internet, outdoor, sales promotion, publicity, uh, material, printed material, and corporate design. Those are the uh, tools that we can use to communicate with our target audience. The next... Uh, Component under marketing, the intangible product is a processes. We have to manage that processes. We have to design that processes uh, so that the customers will go through a smooth uh, process in getting that services. So in designing that uh, processes or activities that the customer has to go through, we need to document first, okay? One of the tools to document the service process is flow chatting. But then this uh, tool is very simple. You just uh, list down what you just, uh, you just need to list down what the customer need to do. If let's say the customer want to stay the hotel, the first thing, they park their car, they check in, spend the night until they check out. Very simple. Okay. The next tool that we can use is a blueprinting. For this uh, tool, it is more uh, advanced than, uh, it, it is an advanced tool uh, of the flow chatting. Again, we document the processes, the activities that need to be uh, done by the customers. And then at the same time, we also identify who is responsible to do what, which department are responsible to do this. Okay, if let's say the customer uh, want to stay at the hotel, so the room must be uh, available uh, for the customers to go in. So meaning to say, Housekeeping must make sure that the room is uh, vacant and uh, clean. The um, FMB department must make sure the food is enough for the new customers to come in. Okay, the uh, ICT system must make sure uh, whatever uh, uh, information uh, available at the receptionist is correct. So a lot of departments involved and a lot of uh, personnel involved in the process from the customer start to use until they finish uh, uh, use the services. Okay, flow chatting is, is simple and blueprinting blueprinting is more complicated and uh, more uh, advanced. So by using blueprinting, basically we have to identify where could be the bottleneck. Where could be the uh, failure point? And we must take action on how to mitigate all those uh, errors uh, that are possible to happen. Okay. There are times that we need to redesign our uh, uh, service process. Meaning to say, when we are looking at the uh, processes involved for the customers to get that service, uh, over a period of time, we need to do something to improve in terms of efficiency. Okay, 
the changes have to be done because of the changes in technology. Okay. If let's say previously everything is done manually, now with the technology, we can automate on certain things. Instead of manual registration, we can use a self-registered kiosk. Or it can be the customer's um, taste has changed. We need to do something to, to, to make it more convenient for the, for the customers. Okay. Uh, Customer also can be part of the uh, customer is also involved in the uh, delivering the service, which means that they are a co-producer for uh, in providing the service. Without the customers, we can uh, deliver the service. For example, if let's say we are we are doing business in. Um, uh, weight loss program. Okay, the customers must heavily participate in the program in order for the service delivery to be successful. For our case, we are education education service provider. If our mode of teaching and learning we conduct face to face, our customer is students. The customer, the student has to come to to the uh, class, to the lecture room in order for us to deliver our service in giving lectures. So in other words, the customers are involved in delivering or producing services to them. Okay, so the ultimate uh, involvement of uh, customers in uh, delivering service, they are doing it uh, on their own, which is uh, self-service, okay? by uh, using um, uh, internet banking, by using uh, self-check-in uh, counters. Those are the uh, considered as a self-service technology, the uh, lowest involvement, lowest participation of customers in uh, service uh, delivery. Okay, in terms of uh, environment, uh, Basically, uh, everything surrounding uh, every, everything surrounding the service uh, providers. It can be um, the ambience condition. It can be the uh, layout equipment or in the office. It can be a signage or any object in the office. Okay. Does that one uh, assist uh, a, a good experience for the customers in getting their service? Does the signage um, provide uh, assistance for the customers to get their service? Does the uh, service counter uh, assist in, for the customers in, does that service counter do facilitate customers in getting the service uh, that they need? So all those things must be taken into consideration in delivering the service to the customers. Okay, these are the service uh, environment dimension that I mentioned just now. It is in ambient condition, okay, which is uh, anything related to the five senses, anything that we smell, anything that we can hear, anything that we can see, it does influence on the... Uh, customers experience you uh, in using the service layout and functionality uh, we are looking at the uh, arrangement of the office equipment arrangement of the uh, office layout does it uh, assist uh, the customers in getting good service uh, from uh, the service provider see sign symbols and artifacts does it give a clear signal on what the customers are supposed to do the moment they enter the service provider's place? Where do they, where do they need to register? Where do they need to go after this? Okay. And last one, it relates to the uh, employees. Okay. Since a uh, service provider, since service, it does uh, require uh, employees to be involved in delivering the service. 
so uh, it can be uh, stressful being uh, being being a uh, front line employees when you have to deal with the customers okay because the, the customers are expect a lot of things from the uh, service employee specifically the front line employees so basically when the job is uh, very challenging you have to uh, you have to get the right uh, employees you have to train them and you have to motivate them so that they can deliver the best, the best uh, service to the uh, customers okay i guess um okay in order to get the right people we need uh, an assistant from the human resource management in terms of hiring the right people uh, motivating them by giving training and uh, give a proper reward so that they can deliver, deliver the best uh, service to the uh, customers so i guess uh, that's about all in uh, seven areas of uh, marketing the intangible products which i've covered on in terms of service product pricing uh, distributing communicating process environment and last one is employees so uh, with that i pass by the session to miss novisha thank you and i hope that you might get some 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 knowledge during uh, our short uh, sharing session just now. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation, Dr. Muhammad Rosnawi. And then for our audience, if you are now asking question, you can raise in your hand, you can raise hand or you can write in the chat. Thank you. Oh, first question we have from Mr. Hen Henke. From Mr. Henke, the time is yours. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> For the chance uh, uh, to Ms. Fabriana. Okay, well, my question is uh, how we can uh, recruit the right staff uh, as the, the job desk that you mentioned, the uh, separate point, Mr. Dr. Rosli. <coughs> maybe you can <coughs> share uh, from a separate point, maybe there is a main point or uh, any hints that i like to hear from you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Enki. Uh, sorry. You're asking about the uh, hiring uh, uh, right employees, right? Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Definitely, we need to we need the assistance from our HR people. Okay, in getting the right people. Uh, if let's say uh, from the uh, marketing point of of view, uh, when we need employees uh, with a uh, right attitude in terms of they like to meet the customers. Uh, they have a uh, extra kind of uh, personality. They are willing to travel. Uh, so those are the requirements that we, we will inform to the HR people so that they can uh, conduct the interview. They might have a, a few selection process that might fit uh, for our requirement. Okay? Mm -hmm. They can conduct an interview. They can conduct a test so that we can have the right people to do the marketing job. See. <clears throat> well, I ah. I like to uh, share or discuss with you. Uh -huh. I have a uh, one one tools like a uh, psycho psycho. <clears throat> uh, psychology test like a uh, psycho. Uh, motoric something <clears throat> and the point is uh, at the first time uh, I, I got the case study <clears throat> uh, under six uh, first month the candidate uh, can do as we wish and after that after we uh, stated the pass the uh, 
the what we call it <coughs> the intensive uh, <coughs> schedule then become a permanent staff uh, my question is uh, how we minimize the bias of the <coughs> competence of the staff after they become a steady become a permanent staff <coughs> So at that time, after six months, we can know, oh, this is the real personality of the staff. Uh, actually, uh, the staff did, did, uh, didn't like uh, to go on marketing, but they prefer uh, behind the table as a back office, uh, something like that. Maybe you can share something. Thank you. So, so meaning to say during the probation uh, during the probation period they do not uh, show their actual personality right once we once we absorb as a permanent staff then only uh, uh, he or she show uh, uh, the true colors real yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there again any, uh, is there any what we call it tools to cure uh, by his Just, personality. Mm, no, normally in practice, we let the uh, HR people to handle that, to handle that. As far as uh, uh, our, I mean, uh, from my experience in the industry, uh, in the marketing uh, field, the mm. moment that we notice that particular mm. staff are not suitable for the uh, marketing post, we pass back to the HR department to do something. Okay, mm -hmm. either they replace with the one that suit uh, with the uh, job requirement, or if that staff can uh, for the beginning, okay, we we are we uh, we are st we we still we are still trying to train that staff so that they can uh, they can they can fit for the post. But then, if they are, their interest is, is not at, at the marketing job, we have no other choice. Otherwise, because the job must be uh, must be done, right? Uh, if that person that are not fit for the post, there's no other choice. We we have to get the the, the right personnel to replace the, that staff. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Well, my one of my friend uh, sharing with me, they uh, suggest me to use. Uh, maybe you can, yeah, or, or heard already uh, what they call it a uh, psychometric. There is about uh, how to assess uh, somebody's personality, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it, uh, it took time. See, but uh, from <clears throat> previous uh, uh, staff. We use a uh, psychometric, but yes, yes. Uh, still uh, the bias there. Yes. So my question is how to mm -hmm. minimize the bias. Yeah, you know, at, at the moment that that's the best that we can do. I mean, uh, we we do a psychometric test with the candidate, but then if the result that candidate is suit to be in marketing post, we are relying on that test. But then uh, once we recruited uh, that particular staff. We notice that 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 guy cannot perform the job, so we have no other choice. Either uh, re uh, uh, reassign that staff to the other department and get a replacement, or uh, we have to make good whatever staff that we have in order to get job done. Oh yeah. Okay. Kalau dah tak boleh nak, kalau dah tak boleh nak dilatih kan apa lagi kita boleh buat? Kan? Oh, tak boleh lanjut ya. <laughs> <laughs> tapi tapi uh, yeah, yeah I, I I agree once we have absorbed that staff into a permanent uh, post it's a bit difficult but then if you are in if we are in the uh, private sectors yes we can terminate that staff. Oh. We can we can give an ample time uh, ample notice uh, yeah. Uh, to terminate the staff. Um, I see. Mm. I uh, I already I did to use uh, selection uh, criteria like uh, mm -hmm. several university use, and I found uh, some of them pass. And this is actually fortunately they answer at the right point. See, I found it. Mm -hmm. Actually, they, they, they uh, this it is not. Uh, 
their personality or their aims or their uh, capability is only just writing thing copy paste and something and mm -hmm. uh, so i use uh, the the last model uh, maybe you can give me a feedback <clears throat> i'm using a sciho graphic with the draw and then uh, we can know the personality oh this is uh, this candidate have a, a what we call it um, a blue uh, uh, pass uh, pass of uh, their experience not so well, but now they want to improve. Then that's okay. I mean, have you hear the psychograph before? Uh, psychograph, not really, prof. Psychometric, oh, yes. Oh, psychometric. Yeah, this is uh, so common. See. And sometimes now, uh, every youngster uh, clever than us, they know how to uh, respond and uh, have, get a good mark. But after, uh, mostly, uh, apparently after six months, I can know, oh, this is the real one, not from a psychometric, <laughs> something like that. My, my area is more on marketing, Prof. Uh, basically, uh... Uh, on this uh, managing the employees, uh, we we let the HR people to handle this. But then uh, our requirement uh, from the marketing perspective, these are the kind of people that we need to get the job done. Okay, uh, how they uh, do their job? Normally, we leave it to them. But our requirement is this. Oh, yeah. In terms of selection process, how stringent, how many uh, stages that they have go through, uh, normally we don't interrupt what they are doing. But then we just state our requirement. We want the, uh, this kind of people to be in a marketing department. So that one I'm talking from my past experience in uh, private sectors and not uh, my current experience as uh, teaching staff. Oh, I see. Yes. Uh, I've been in the industry for, for, for almost 20 years before I'm joining the uh, services sector. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Firstly, about the, the, what we call it, the competence on uh, the smart or the empathy can be passed. <clears throat> but the fairness is, uh, is hard, you see. It's hard to find... Uh, several staff that uh, they have a good commitment in uh, enforce uh, the fairness between them, see? Sometimes mm -hmm. they use uh, their friend to exploit and then it's for their luck, see? Something like that. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Maybe you have yeah. uh, any advice for me? Mm. <laughs> Actually, I'm not the expert in uh, HR methods. Uh... But then, uh, when we're having problem with, with our staff, normally, uh, I mean, again, we let the HR, HR people to handle. And then normally, what HR uh, personnel would do, they, I mean, if that staff is, uh, is already absorbed as a permanent staff, the only thing that the, the uh, HR mm -hmm. can do is uh, reassign to another post or keep on uh, try to give training advice. Mm, but see. then uh, again, if their performance is not up to, up to standard, uh, we can use uh, that uh, reason as a non-performer. Then uh, we can uh, terminate the service because of their the achievement, their performance is not up to the standard. Oh, I see. Non-performance mm -hmm. appraisal, right? Yes. Um, we, we can use the performance appraisal to, to uh, I mean, to... I see. To, to punish, not to say to punish, lah, to terminate their service. Lah. Otherwise, we are, we are in problem. We, 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 we can't afford to, to keep on... Uh, to keep this kind of uh, stuff when, uh, when, uh, when we have a job to be done, job to be completed. It will be liability for the company to keep uh, keep on uh, keep on having that kind of stuff. Okay then. But, but then the best advice uh, 
must get from the HR, HR people lah, prof. Non performance okay. uh, appraisal. Yeah, <laughs> performance appraisal. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, okay, thank you very much, uh, Prof, for sharing your views and your information. Eh? Okay, okay, back to uh, Miss Fabriana. Thank you for the chance. Thank you so much for Mr. Hengki. And then we have a question from audience in a Zoom chat. This is from Mr. Amin Tohari. How strategy how strategy manage service employees they Productive in Society 5.0 in the next year, 2023 until 2045, especially for Generation Z. Thank you. Uh, how strategy manage a service employee is stay productive in Society 5.0 next year for Generation Z. This uh, generation Z is uh, they 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 love to use a uh, gadget, right? Um, mm, how to say this one? Um, uh, I mean. Uh, from my experience, uh, this uh, type of uh, this new generation, they, they prefer uh, something convenient. Okay, uh, maybe uh, for this group, we can allow them to have more flexibility in in terms of uh, rather than. Uh, they need to come to the office. Maybe we can allow them to work uh, from home, which is uh, uh, more flexible in terms of the uh, working. Okay, Miss Fabriana, you are muted. Doctor Amin. Do this this uh, new generation they are unlike uh, our our generation whereby we have come to the office at certain hours. Okay, we have to uh, be in the office at certain period of time. But then the, their their generation is uh, is different. They are they are looking for something uh, convenient to them. So to suit that kind of attitude, maybe again, I, I guess that we have to give give them a more flexibility in terms of their working hours. Okay, if that is what they prefer, like we are facing in our teaching and learning today, uh, most of the students they prefer to 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 have a online session rather than uh, coming to the class. So in terms of uh, working, maybe also we can adopt that kind of uh, strategy whereby they are allowed to, to be flexible. It's not necessary for them to come to the office uh, nine to five, fixed working hours. Allow them a more flexibility in terms of the working hours. But then we must uh, set a uh, requirement. We must set the, the objective that must be uh, uh, completed, although you are flexible in terms of your working hours. Okay, Dr. Amin. Uh, okay, thank you for answering. And then we have a question. This is question from audience in YouTube. The for first question, this is from Ms. Sukanto. What are some examples of an intangible products and is printing and intangible assets? Thank you. Again, again, uh, Novita, example of intangible products. Yes, and in and is printing and intangible assets. Asset thing. I can I can get your question. Uh, the example of intangible asset and. 
what are some example of an intangible products and is branding an intangible asset? Intangible product and its branding. Yes. Okay. Uh, the example like uh, I mentioned just now, if uh, we are taking the example of Unimap and Stacom University, our intangible product is we are providing education to the students. Okay, that is the intangible intangible product of uh, both Unimap and Stacom University. And the branding, of course, the name itself is a branding, Unimap or Stacom. Okay, the name, the logo, the colors, the uniform, everything is part of the branding. Okay, get, get me, right? uh, uh, those who ask the question. Yes, I get it. Thank you. And then this is question from Mr. Januar Tito Bagaskoro. Mm -hmm. Which is easier for visible or intangible goods business? Thank you. What is? What is? Which is easier Which? for visible or intangible good business? Which idea? Uh, I'm ready sending to Zoom chat. Sure. What are the examples of intangible? Of, uh, okay, question number one is answered already, right? Which is easier for visible or intangible good business? Uh, of course, in terms of, uh, I mean, if you are comparing something uh, tangible and intangible, it is much easier dealing with the tangible things. But then we can't ignore the fact that the service industry is growing. Okay, we can't, we can't. Uh, let go the opportunities whereby that sector is growing. Although, although it is a bit easier to handle on the uh, tangible things, but then if the business opportunity is growing on the intangible uh, areas in the services sector, we shouldn't, uh, <clears throat> we shouldn't, uh, uh, we shouldn't uh, uh, let go the opportunity like that. We may, we may focus, we may do something on the expanding uh, areas to do the business. Okay, how to make an intangible business not easily imitated by the other competitors? Again, um, we are looking at this uh, additional thing. But then, uh, it is hard to say that uh, we, we, we can't, we don't have the competitors. The competitors normally would adopt the strategy wait and see. If the business is good, definitely the competitors will come in. Okay, if we are looking at the product life cycle, there, there are times uh, uh, at the growing stage and up to a certain time at the maturity stage, and then after that, it declining stage. The competitors definitely would come in if that if the business is lucrative enough for them. You. You can't have the, the, the business that, ha that has no competitors. But then we can, we can, we can delay the competitors uh, to come in if the, uh, the, 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 uh, the business requires a big investment. Okay, number four, how to make a non-tangible product that actually out of date in technology still can survive. For example, old car service and take product service because while the market is small, but this still exists, what strategy for it? Okay, this kind of product, they fall under uh, a specialty products. You don't have to, there is a, a specific niche market for this kind of product. You don't have to do something for the antiques or, uh, uh, all items. You have a niche market for this kind of products. And this group of customers, they are willing to travel to get these items. 
there is no need so much uh, modification or changes for this kind of item. The longer, uh, the older the item, the high value of the item. Okay. Okay, I get it. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for your answer. I hope for this question will be help it uh, from audience. Yeah, I guess no one else asking again. May I go to the next session for closing? Eh, I'm sorry, for time a uh, picture, take a picture for documentation, sir. Okay. Thank you, Miss Novita. Okay, for those who haven't activated the camera, you can active or open the camera first so we can take photos together. Okay, let me count from one, two, three. Once again, one, two, three. Okay, thank you. I will return the event to Miss Novita. Thank you so much for Miss Webby. And then uh, before I closing this event, uh, for Miss Rosley, you will say something before? Okay, I mean, I just want to say thank you very much for UNIMAP and Stackholm University for giving me the opportunity to have a, a knowledge uh, sharing session like this. And then thank you very much for those who answered the question for Prof. Henke for sharing his uh, valuable knowledge on this, uh, on this uh, aspect. Okay. Thank you very much. Hope to see you again and hope to see uh, to hear from you again. Okay, okay thank, thank you. Thank you so much for Miss 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 Mr. Rosley. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. And thank you for all audience for attending until last session. Thank you so much. I hope this event will be sharing new let sharing new knowledge for us and it's so very beneficial for our audience. Thank you so much for everyone. We hope we hope we can meet again in other event in the future with the collaboration online or offline with the Miss Mr. Rosley. Thank you so much for if your time for today thank you so much for mr rosley thank you stay safe everyone thank you so much see you soon and goodbye bye Okay. okay i think that's enough uh, for this event thank you good afternoon uh, have a good rest bye 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 thank you